What is going on guys? And today we're gonna to be working with a BMW and an E93 as you probably suspected. Also in today's project, we're gonna to try to get rid of those guys, the brake, the ABS and the traction. We're gonna drop down the handbrake that's gonna pop up the yellow sign. But after all, it's meant to be a speed sensor because after scanning, we have rear right speed sensor, which is gonna be extremely easy to replace it. It's gonna take us as much as just to remove the wheel and one extra screw. A little bit of wiggling and wobbling in terms of the wheel guard, but that's also not the case. One thing to be aware of, uh, that's the front and the rear axles are different. The same sensor could be installed on the passenger or the driver's side, but it cannot be installed on the rear axle if it's meant to for the front one. By the way, I did not get the OEM sensor. This is the Bosch and it's 30 bucks of the Amazon with the prime shipping, which is awesome. I think we're not gonna need to clear any type of messages after all, cause uh, that's gonna be plug and play and that's it. Anyway guys, let's get to the work and see what is going on with that sensor. As always, jack it up the car or crank the lug nuts first. Depends on what kind of tools you use. The two wires right here, they are going all the way right here. And we basically need to pop couple screws off one of the bottom one right in the corner in there which is the eight mil so in my case i have a brake sensor right here which is wrapped in uh, duct tape and zip tied to the upper control arm that's simply to not damage the sensor and we don't want it to mess with that anywhere anyway uh so after that we're going to simply unplug all those wires or the clips right here the other side which is that wire going here i think it's uh, supposed to be a little gray a uh, gray one it's going right behind here as you can see we have the m type from the perspective it's gonna be a right over here before anything i'm gonna pull the sensor out and we'll see what is the condition of it what was the cause of uh not working because i was driving in the rain uh the rear wheels were spinning a little bit because it was kind of slippery but it's a lot of torque and power here in that case, the message just pop up and uh, I tried to clear it, but it didn't work. And it showed me the sensor went down. So let's pop it out. Might be some dirt in there or whatever stuff going on uh, inside, but uh, we'll find out in a second. Okay, so we got T30. And those bolts usually not tight and sensor is also easy to pull it out. So what can I say from just looking onto it? It's a little dirty, it's not the way as I wanted to see, but on the top of that, I wouldn't risk it and install it back to just having, uh, having just pain in one spot and testing it out and removing the wheel after all. I got my carburetor cleaner. You definitely can uh, go with WD-40, but I don't want it to have anything sticky inside because the dirt still can build up in there. And as far as it's gonna be grinding into the sensor or if it's gonna be touching whatever stuff gonna be doing, it's not gonna be good for it. So I think at this amount, that should be just fine. It's pretty clean inside. So the next step is gonna be simply, I'm doing a 10 mil right here, which is the plastic one. Then eight mil down at the bottom right here. Another 10 mil. So we can see the harness coming from the, that portion is sitting right there. So it's really hard to see it, but we have our connectors, which is basically popping them out. We wanted to get the gray connector, push pin knobs basically at the top. So press it at the top and trying to undo it, which has got to be pretty tight cause they're a piece of rubber. The other portion of the connector, we definitely can reach it uh, from the front. But right now, I just want to connect the new one and leave it hanging there. So we got our new sensor. Gotta know where it gotta go. All set. And yeah, try to pop the stuff back. So they're basically type of hole. And you gotta insert the pin tool inside and that's how you could expose the, the wire. We get in the new one, having it exactly the same spot, and locking the pin. That one is right behind here. Oops, wrong one. Wrong hole. Same procedure. 
and from that spot you probably can fish the wire through the same path that is uh, the old one is going and lock in the clamp. So the center control arm have pretty much the same principle, but here we have a little different structure. But after all, control arm have only two of those uh, clamps. The cool thing about those guys, you simply can insert the wire inside and it's going to lock it uh, in place automatically. Get into the same spot, pop in the sensor back, make sure the wire not under the tension or whatever you gotta be pretty cautious about it and voila go well, back to the business guys okay moment of truth brake chassis and blah 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 still on actually out of hand start driving and we'll see what's gonna happen I did not screw the wheel all the way, but let's put it on a cruise control because I didn't have it for a while and I wanted to enjoy all that stuff. As good as. But as you can see, guys, the car recalibrate everything and it was pretty simple. Basically done for today. Anyway, guys, please hit the thumbs up button there. That's gonna help me a lot. And subscribe my channel. In that case, you're not gonna miss any of the future videos which is gonna be about the E93 roof, about the M3 S65 engine, some of the things, repainting the trim pieces, gonna be showing you what type of paint you should use, gonna be using the airbrush for repaint the rims, and so on and so on. A lot of restoration, a lot of rebuilding. Uh, we're gonna to try to, or make a temp of uh, just refreshing the seats, which is also another good question. Anyway, guys, I love you and I'll see you next one. Off the range.